I wanted to um, share with you some thoughts during this coronavirus time. I think everybody needs a little encouragement, and the Word of God and the Spirit of God can bring us encouragement when nothing else can. I mean, the greatest Disney movie cannot touch what the Spirit of God can do in our hearts. Uh, and often during the tough times, that's when we are more open to hearing what the Spirit of God has to say. And that's really what I want to talk about today is it's a new time and we've not been through this before. We've not been through the social distancing and the isolation and uh, the financial crises and uh, sometimes wanting to help people but not knowing how to help people. I mean, honestly, um, it's really different for us in the church. We can't visit people. I mean, nobody wants me coughing on them or something like that. <laughs> not that I have anything, but um, we can't see people in the hospital. Um, we understand that even uh, some of the Phones are being taken away from people in the hospital. Um, but it is a time to be creative. And if the church is creative, if we think about, okay, I'm limited in what I can do. I can't do what I normally do. But what can I do in a safe way that can glorify God and that can encourage people or to help people, then that's what we should do. Um, the writing of cards with a mask and gloves on, for example. Um, the uh, And I wanted to tell you a story. Uh, I mean, the Bible is full of creativity. Jesus was the most creative person. Uh, when he was preaching a sermon, he didn't use notes, and they would ask him a question. He'd come up with things like the story of the prodigal son or the story of the Good Samaritan without uh, rehearsal or just an answer to a question. And uh, another creative person that I haven't really thought about as being creative is Samson. I used to admire Samson as a young man because... Uh, just because he was big and strong and muscular, you know, I want to be like Samson, you know, but never got there. But the, the thing about Samson that was so neat is he was so creative. He had nothing. The Philistines made sure that the Israelites had nothing. So the Philistines were, had conquered the nation of Israel. They made sure that they didn't have any swords. They didn't have any spears, nothing. And uh, so one time, well, let me just read you a passage. The Bible speaks a lot better and more powerfully than the words I can say. This is from the book of Judges. Um, the people of Israel were turning Samson over to the Philistines because the Philistines may said, if you don't turn Samson over, we're going to burn all your fields and make life really difficult for you. And um, so they bound Samson up with two new ropes and led him up from the rock. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came toward him shouting, they thought, We've got him, we've got him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson in power. The ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. So he just busted through the ropes. Then finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Then Samson said, with a donkey's jawbone, I've made donkeys of them. With a donkey's jawbone, I've killed a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, and the place was called Ramoth Lehi, which means jawbone hill. Um, 
another time you want to take revenge on the um, Philistines for lying to him and deceiving him and trying to rob him and taking his wife away from him. So he didn't, again, didn't have any swords or spears. And how is he going? How is he as one man going to make a difference to the Philistines? So he caught foxes. I'm sure over a long time, he caught hundreds of foxes. And then he tied them, tied them tail, and fastened a torch to every pair of tail and lit the torches and loosened the standing grain of the Philistines, and it burned up the shocks and standing grain together with vineyards and olive groves. And uh, then again, they attacked Samson, and Samson beat them back. So, I'm not saying foxes, and that's not saying that I would do that, or that that's commendable. But I am saying... Samson would look around and see what he had and make the best use of that. I was looking at some videos of some of my grandchildren. Um, you know, they're stuck at home. They don't have the super toys that they have at school. Or the super playgrounds that are so nice that they have at school uh, with friends and things. So they're just beating on a box with some drumsticks, having a blast. And... When I look at the children of South Sudan and Mexico who have nothing, they don't even have a, a ball or a soccer ball to play with in the whole village. Um, they find ways to play. They'll, they'll get a piece of paper and wide it up into a ball and play with it, play with that. So during this coronavirus time, I'm asking you and encouraging you to be creative in this fight against the coronavirus. Fight it with love. Fight it with uh, uh, being creative in the ways that you're helping other people. And um, I just pray that you are safe and that your families are safe. And I uh, uh, look forward to the day when we'll get back together again in real worship when we gather together. Uh, appreciate all those who worshipped online and those who came and drive in worship. I mean, those are great. And, you know, listening to the Word of God. and But, you know, Janet has a wonderful voice. But it's even nicer when everybody sings together. And, you know, while I can pray and Blaine can pray, isn't it wonderful when we can all join our prayers together in one place? Um, I know we can do so remotely, but when you can hear with your own ears and get feedback, it's a really good, good thing. So God bless you, and I will talk with you later. Thanks. Let's have a prayer now. Lord, thank you that you remind us to do the best we can with what we have. Help us to be content with that and help us to learn to make the most of where we are and what we can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye.